but there are a lot of European Jews that are in Israel and they are not direct descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Make sure y'all clicking that greenhouse, become a member of the God First Game. All right. Also, nominate others to become a member of the platform. This platform has been running a while. Um, dominating Clubhouse when it comes to bills on faith. Um, so make sure y'all click in that little greenhouse, become a member, and nominate others to it. Uh, we got the good brother Yawasop of uh God first gang by way of Ron Godog or Barium uh, played a huge role at putting together this interview. So make sure uh, y'all throw that good brother. Uh, y'all would sop some ones in the chat right quick. Throw him some ones in the chat, man. Throw that good brother some ones in the chat, man. Good brother right here. Good brother. Good brother, good brother man. We got the brother Ma Halab on stage. who will be a, one of the hosts of the interview as well. Um, of God first game by way of Tabernacle of David, man. Throw their brother some tools in the chat, man. Let's get their brother some tools in the chat, man. All right. And I'm lastly myself, the third host of tonight. Man. You know, corporate quarry of God first game by way of Tabernacle of David. Um, I will be also assisting. Um, at the questions and the direction of the interview as well, man. Throw me some threes in the chat, man. You know, we always, uh, we make jokes here. You know, we call ourselves the Trinity. <laughs> we call ourselves the Trinity, man, uh, of God first game. Make sure y'all click that little greenhouse and become a member and uh, nominate others. Uh, but uh, we also have a guest today. Um, Mahalab, I'm going to bounce it over to you, man. What's What's going on? Who we got today, Mahala? So I have the privilege of giving you guys this introduction. If you need one, all right, we have a very special guest with us here today. After winning Florida's Mr. Basketball in high school in 2002, he was immediately selected with the ninth overall pick in the 2002 NBA draft. He began his illustrious career by winning Rookie of the Year in 2003. He is a six-time NBA All-Star, five-time All-NBA, including one first-team All-NBA in 2007. Mm. He also continued his basketball career in Israel, where he became a two-time Israeli basketball premier team league champion and was a finals mvp in 2020 in god first game's opinion he was the key reason why steve nash won back-to-back -back nba MVP facts and should definitely be an nba hall of famer he is also a philanthropist and a humanitarian Ladies and gentlemen, everyone give a warm welcome to Amari Stoudemire. My God, appreciate that, fellas. Appreciate it, fellas. Yes, sir. All right, man. Uh, shalom, shalom, shalom. Thank you for your time. Uh, Amari, uh, what, what would you rather be called for, first and foremost, brother? I mean, either way is cool. Called, uh, what, what is that, Yehoshaphat? Yehoshaphat, yeah. yeah. Would you Yehoshaphat. rather be called that, my good brother? Let's go for it. All right, cool. All right, Yehoshaphat. All right, uh, I'm a huge Knicks fan, bro. Uh, I, listen, when you when you was playing with Carmelo Anthony, I, I mean, I thought you guys was gonna bring me a ring, bro. Uh, and and. <laughs> This might be a, a funny first question, man, but what happened, man? I thought you guys was going to bring my Knicks a uh, championship, bro. Can, can you talk about that a little bit, the, the the dynamic of the team, the chemistry of the team, man? What, 
Why you guys never brought me 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 a championship back to my city, man? Yeah, we had a, we had a we had a solid run. I mean, when I got when I got to New York from Phoenix, um, you know, we was playing a certain style of basketball that was conducive for the rest of the guys, right? Um, and then we made a blockbuster trade, and we traded a lot of our players, and we brought in Melo. And so we had we had a good we had a good run. First of all, I didn't stay completely healthy throughout that second half of my time with the Knicks. So that was one of the reasons why we wasn't able to really get over the hump. And then we we also had a lot of we had four different coaches that came in and changed the chemistry up. Um, we did bring in a veteran crew. We we brought in Jay Kidd, Receive Wallace. Um, we brought in Kirk Thomas, I think it was, brought him back to New York. So we went to the second round that year, but we still wasn't able to get get past. One year we lost to Boston. And I think the Heat one year and then also Indiana. You know what I'm saying? But we just didn't have enough to get over the hump. Con, that's, um, you know, because I was watching that as well. I wasn't a Knicks fan, but I was definitely a fan of yourself and uh, Melo. And I thought that uh, that combination was going to be uh, dynamic as a, um, you know, a fan of basketball. Um, but just let's let's touch a little earlier than that. Uh, you know, I uh, read up on some information and you can always correct me if I'm wrong, but I seen where, you know, at a very young age, um, you kind of lost your father. I think around the age of 12 and, uh, you know, advancing a little bit more. Um, you had some, you know, childhood struggles. I think your mom was, you know, in and out of uh, institutions and stuff like that. So um, how do you feel your childhood shaped you into the man you are today? Yeah, man. I mean, I grew up in a small town. Well, I grew up in Florida. Um, I also moved to New York when I was in the third grade. But my father had passed away when I was 12 years old. My mom was in the streets basically my whole childhood years. Um, and so my mom was a hustler. My brothers all were. My uncles and everybody was in the streets. So mm-hmm. it was it, it, it was kind of hard to... But my thing was I always stay focused, you know what I'm saying? I knew I knew I had a talent in sports, whether it was baseball, basketball, or football. I played all three growing up, and I was good at all three of them. But I chose basketball as my, you know what I'm saying, as, as my way out. And so um, I basically just stayed focused, man. I, I, I made sure I didn't, I didn't, I kind of was my own leader in the space, right? I made sure I didn't get around the wrong crowd. I was able to somewhat leave my neighborhood and go to a prep school um, to help catapult my young high school basketball career. And, and that, that's somewhat gave me the focus I needed to to lock in even more on basketball. And and also I was blessed with the genetics too, man. I, I grew to be six 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 my freshman year. I was mm. six eight my I was six eight my junior year. I was six ten by the time I was a senior. So God God blessed me from that standpoint. And I just took it from there. Now I seen you had a, I believe you missed your junior year as well. Uh, I think high school playing as well, right? Yeah, yeah. I only played only played two years of high school basketball. My first year I transferred. I transferred from Lake from from Lake Wells to North Carolina. I went to a prep school in Mount Zion in North Carolina. So I played that year. When I transferred back my second year, um, it was during the middle of the season. So I wasn't able to play that year. Um, And then I was the number one player in the country going into my junior year. And when I transferred from school, these prep schools was crazy, man, because I remember a coach told me in my face, he said, if I leave the school, he's going to document my transcripts to where I have all D's and F's and I never play high school basketball again. Oh, that's and crazy. It was, and it was me and Jerry Jack. Jerry Jack played in the NBA for a while. Me and Jack was in the coach's office when he told me this. And I looked at Jack. Jack looked back at me. I looked back at Jack. I'm like, are you hearing this? You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and sure enough, I left the school and that's exactly what they did. Um, so I miss HBO. I think Real Sports with Brian Gumble. HBO came down to my high school to cover the story. Um, but they ruled me ineligible. And by the time Brian Gumble discovered the true grades, then they realized, oh, well, they, the school lied about his grades and it was a whole, it was a whole finesse. But by the time they discovered the truth, it was too late within the basketball season. So I missed my junior year. Um, but then I played my senior year and then that's when I was able to show my talents. Got you. So even with basketball, like I know a lot of people have, 
that as a hobby, of course, nowadays, but you was um, able to have it as a career. Um, but we may get into certain businesses and stuff like that. But I seen you also still got into other business structures, even when you uh, continue your basketball career going over to um, Israel, uh, you still was involved in other businesses. I believe you had like a kosher wine uh, going on. I'm not sure if that's still an active business for you, but can you uh, communicate to us, I guess, a little bit of how that was when you transitioned over to Israel, um, your basketball career, and, you know, the businesses that you was opening up and um, I guess the experience from opening up the businesses over there. Yeah, I mean, when I was throughout my whole career, I was, I was, um, my mom, actually my mom, basically, um, my mom and her husband, when I was about 12 years old, she was saying that we are from the children of Israel, from the lost tribes, and we should connect with the laws of Moses and these things. And so when I was 12 years old, this is back in 95, 96. Um, and so I just started learning from there. And throughout my whole NBA career, I always had brothers with me. I call, I call them study partners, right? We all always... Even in Phoenix, my years in Phoenix, I had study partners with me and was learning, we learning biblical context. And then when I got to New York with the Knicks, I was doing the same thing. They traveled with me to New York and I, you know, just got them all set up in the city. And we still had that same type of learning structure throughout my whole time with the Knicks. And so in 2010, and mind you, I was already somewhat pursuing like off the court activities, right? I was trying to figure out how to really monetize, you know, um, entrepreneurship. Um, so. <clears throat> when I got with the Knicks um, in 2010, me and the Bredgers, we traveled to Israel. You know what I'm saying? So I took everybody over to Israel. I went to see what I've been learning. What I was doing was I was connecting the biblical learning with actual physical learning, right? So I would travel. I would learn about everything. Then I would travel to those countries and get a historical tour guide to show me all these historical sites to make sure what I'm learning is true. So I traveled to Rome. You know, when the Roman invaded Jerusalem, I wanted to see all these artifacts that the, that, that the Romans took from Jerusalem. I traveled to Greece, do the same thing, and then I wanted to go to Israel. And so in 2010, I traveled to Israel with the Brethren. And that's when, when I got there, people were asking me, like, why, you go, why would you go to Israel? I'm like, well, I'm here to discover my Hebraic roots. And then it became this whole massive conversation. Um, and then when that conversation happened, <clears throat> people start approaching me about opportunities, you know, whether, whether wine company, whether it's the team in Jerusalem, there's a team that was like up for sale. They couldn't find an owner. They were like, do you want to get involved in being a, you know, a stakeholder in this team in Jerusalem? I'm like, yeah, for sure. I mean, why not? You know what I'm saying? So I kind of got involved. I got involved in those two endeavors when it came to Israel, but I was also, you know, I had a record label before that, um, <clears throat> had a clothing line spiritual gangster um before that um so i was always i was always into i was in the, i had a production company produced movies and films so i was always somewhat into the entrepreneurship even before the wine and the team in israel okay okay um now uh you know just out of curiosity i know especially growing up as a black man in america no matter your social status, no matter your income, no matter how famous you are, I know, you know, you're going to face uh, prejudices and racism. A uh, perfect example will be LeBron James. And brothers could correct me if I'm wrong, but to my memory, I believe it was uh, LeBron James, somebody breaking into his house and spray painting, excuse my language, but spray painting nigga uh, right, right in his mansion. And this is, you know, uh, this is LeBron James. You know, the people who they're deeming the king of the NBA at that time and even now. So uh, I, what I want to ask is, you know, going to I know America's one thing, but playing basketball in Israel, having your business in Israel. Have you faced the same racism that goes on over here towards your people? I mean, I haven't really <clears throat> I haven't really faced a lot of racism. Obviously, when you go to Israel, they look at you as if, like, why are you here, right? They don't know. We see a lot of us, especially African-American brothers that are that go to Israel and decide to somewhat be engulfed in a the culture there. So they don't see it often. So they, it's basically out of curiosity a lot of times. Um, <clears throat> so I haven't, really, I, haven't really, I haven't really experienced a lot of racism over there. 
It's more so just them not being comfortable or not knowing why one is there. You know what I'm saying? Um, and that's, that's kind of what I got from it when I first traveled to Israel. Why would you feel that they're not comfortable and, and feel why you are here? Because, you know, that's just very interesting to me that you said that. So if you could just expound on that a little more. Well, they try to they try to figure out exactly. Um, I guess it's more so about really trying to understand, like you know, why someone's here. Like, that's like that's like in our community. If we have, you know, what I'm saying we in my hood, right? We see a white guy driving through the neighborhood. We're like, hold on, what's he doing over here? Like, what's he what's he up to? You know, what I'm saying it's the same type of concept where people are just like not used to seeing us there, and they're just looking to see why we're there. It's the same thing in the hood. You know, what I'm saying we see. A group of white guys walking through the neighborhood were like, "Wait, what's going on? They're trying to what's what's happening over here?" And you look at them a certain way, like, "Why are they in, why are they here?" It's the same same concept. Okay. Uh, an- another question I got is, um, so pretty much, what was the most challenging about assimilating assimilating into that culture? What would you say was the most challenging part? Because I do know you you moved to Jerusalem, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so what 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 do you think will be the most challenging thing about moving to Jerusalem and assimilating into that culture? Um, the most challenging thing for me was to figure out the why, right? I was trying to figure out like why why everyone is dressed a certain way, why everyone has these curls on the side of their heads, why everyone's, you know, bobbing when they pray, why is everyone, you know, I had to figure out all the whys. So it took me it took me a while to really humble myself to somewhat learn and try to figure out exactly what's going on. I think that was the most um that was that was the most uncomfortable position for me was while I'm there, and mind you, I had locks. I'm six ten, African American guy walking through Orthodox communities, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I wasn't afraid. I wasn't like I wasn't afraid of anything. You know what I'm saying? I am there to learn and figure out what's going on, try to try to try to, you know, figure out what's happening. Um, and so I think that was the only uncomfortable space to be in, being that it wasn't a lot of us there. There's a few of us, a lot of us, there's a few brethren over there. We kind of grouped up, we learned together, but this wasn't a lot of us. And that was, that was probably the most uncomfortable space to be in is being that it was only a few of us there. All right. Appreciate that. So I actually want to get into a little bit of controversy. You know, we got to get into some controversy uh, on the interview. So, you know, I want to talk about, you know, your response to uh, the Kyrie Irving situation. You know, we all know he posted, you know, a link to a particular uh, documentary and uh, you had a response on it. So I want to play this uh, response that you had when asked about it. And then I want to kind of, you know, get you to clarify some things. Yeah. Kyrie. Amari Stoudemire, six-time All-Star, joining the conversation. Amari, you bring a very unique perspective. Obviously, we all know the success you had with Nash on the court, and then you were an assistant on the Nets, and also you're a black man who is Jewish. What was your reaction to Kyrie? I mean, my initial reaction was what I've noticed throughout the years of Kyrie is that he's a guy who's really trying to find his identity, right? He's on his quest of searching for information and, and knowledge, and what, while, while acquiring this type of information, he got to be more mindful of doing more research, checking your sources, reviewing before you actually, you know, promote anything. It. Right, exactly. And I think that's something that Kyrie's probably lacking right now is that he's not really doing the full vetting of what he's promoting. And I think that's getting him into trouble. Right. So, you know, we heard the quick 48-second clip. So I think, you know, a grievance that I have and, you know, a lot of us who we, who we uh, you know, we are now understanding that we're Israelites have, is that, you know, they categorized you, you know, in a certain way or kind of framed you in a certain way on ESPN with that opening question. Um, and then you didn't kind of, well, it seems like you didn't take the opportunity to share that, you know, based off your research and the research that Kyrie have done is that you guys understand that you are actually Israelites. Uh, so can you take some time to kind of speak to that grievance and uh, whether or not you feel it's important that as an Israelite, that your identity be acknowledged. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I think I think when they, when she said as a as a black man and Jewish, 
that kind of covers my Israelite situation. I know Jewish is a different connotation of a name, but in totality, that means you're a Jew, right? So that kind of covers my 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 Judaical lineage, right? My heritage. There's not a lot of black people in the world right now that are considered to be Jewish or or Jews. So that whole that whole notion of people seeing a black man being a Jew is new as a new concept. So that kind of covers my Israelite identity. And far as for Kyrie, you know, um, with that documentary, obviously for him to uh, what I was saying was that you have to make sure as as, as an as NBA player or a public figure, it's OK to promote you. Like I saw this documentary back when I was in, in the early 2000s or so. You know what I'm saying, and and what I what what we did as a group, we sat down as study as a study group and dissect the documentary and learn from it, and we grew from it. You know what I'm saying, like if like so, my whole thing was saying to saying about Kyrie is, you have to sit down, study it, review it, and go over it with your guys. You know what I'm saying, and just know what know if you're gonna promote something, you have to know exactly what you're promoting before you do it because you're a public figure and everyone is going to critique what you're promoting. It's just a different, it's different than just a regular guy promoting something. You got to be more mindful and more understanding of what you're promoting. And if you, and if you, and if you think everything's legit, then, then you go for it, but you just got to be careful. Uh, that's an excellent response. Uh, right here I have, uh, so the documentary, uh, documentary that was um, shared by Kyrie Irving um, was said to have quote unquote anti Semitic views. Um, we see that word used frequently. Uh, can you define anti Semitism for us? I mean, Semitic means you come from the nation of Shem, right? After, after Noah, Noah had three children, J, J Fat, Ham, and Shem. Being that you're from Shem, you're a Semitic people. Um, so that basically boils down to 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 Semitic people, whether whether it's whether it's the um, Arabs, whether it's the Israelites, whether it's Edom, they all they all are Semitic people. So I actually uh uh I actually agree with that. Uh right here. Um so do you believe the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade are Semitic or are Israelites by and large? Absolutely, without without a doubt. I mean, that's that, that that goes without saying. I mean, the Torah speaks to that. It talks about in Deuteronomy about how how we'll be taken to a land as slaves, and it gives you the whole breakdown. If we don't keep the laws, what will happen to us? But it also gives us the breakdown. If we do keep the laws, what will happen to us? And that gives us because no no one has really ever told us. Like from the American government, they have never really told us who we are and where we came from. They're keeping that a secret. So it's our job to look into the the most truthful book ever written, which is the Bible. And to break down and find out who we really are, and by doing that, that's when we find out that we are from the children of Israel and that we are from the Israelite nation. Hey, let me drop a bomb for this brother real quick, man. Hey, let me drop one more for him. I gotta drop one more for him. All right, all praises. Well, I know, um, you know, when a lot of people think of uh, anti-Semitism, which is a very, very tough word to use especially nowadays you know how the media portrays it so on and so forth now i know when a lot of people think of anti-semitism especially you know the biggest event that pops up in their head is the holocaust and you know i'm not saying and i know there's a lot of stuff out there you know people saying it's fake people, well, i'm not here to sit i'm not here to talk about that neither am i here to you know downgrade an atrocity that happened to anybody because a murder is a murder and a killing is a killing. But what I will like to understand is if you agree that the people brought in the transatlantic slave trade were Israelites, do you consider the transatlantic slave trade to be an act of anti-Semitism? Yeah, I don't necessarily think they did it to be, to, to really target Israelites, I think they did it just from a just from a monetary standpoint. They wanted to make it was a trade, so they wanted to make money. They wanted to bring these people to a nation to help basically have unpaid labor. I don't think they targeted um, Israelites for it, even though the Africans somewhat sold us to this place, and it was like, well, take these people instead of us. Um, so a lot of a lot of a lot of the Judeans went into the transatlantic slave trade, but I don't know if. I don't know if that was an intent act on to search for 
the Judeans to go there. I don't have the answer to that. You know what I'm saying? But with us being a Semitic people, you can say it, it, you you can you can make the argument that it's anti-Semitic for them to take these uh, Semitic people into a land and have them you know force them to do unpaid labor. You can you can make the argument for sure. Okay, okay. So you wouldn't say it was a act of intention. You would say it's kind of more an act of biblical prophecy. Right. Okay. All right, I got you. That that's 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 a fair answer. So, uh, you know, from my extensive research, uh, me and uh, many other brothers uh, that represent the community that I come from, we believe that the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans by Negro and Indian descent, by and large, uh, and scattered all across the earth, are Israelites today. As you being an Israelite yourself, uh, do you have this understanding? And if not, can you identify what group of people, uh, by and large, do you think the Israelites are today? Yeah, I, to- I totally agree with that. I think I think you said it best. Like from an Afro Negro descent, then that that identifies them as being Israelites. Um, now a lot of lot a lot of Spaniards are from Spain, which is from Europe, so they would be Gentiles. But most of the most of the um, the brothers that are from Puerto Rico or, or, or you know Dominican or even some natives who have that Negro um, um, heritage are from the nation of Israel. Okay, all praise. Uh, may yeah, get drop another bomb for that brother. Drop one more for that brother. Like from flex, right. man. <laughs> 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 hey man, all praises, man. Uh, you know us, you know God first game, myself, Halab, Corey. You know we collectively represent what is widely known as the Black Hebrew Israelites. I don't agree with that term. Uh, I think it's kind of derogatory. Yeah, uh, me neither. You know, mm-hmm. Go ahead, brother. You was gonna say something? No, I was saying, I was saying, me neither. I, I don't agree with that term either. Y'all was up. Right, definitely don't agree with that term. But uh, just colloquially speaking, so people can understand the community I'm talking about. So, you know, we represent what is widely known as the Black Hebrew Israelites. Uh, Various of congregations and schools within our community appear on uh, the Southern Poverty Law Center. And we've been condemned uh, by the Anti-Defamation League and depicted as violent criminals by the media. Do you disagree with this or agree with this? Do you think this is a fair representation of our community? What's your takes on this? I, I don't. I don't think it's completely fair. You know what I'm saying. But I do think we have to be more mindful of of, of how one govern ourselves because you know people are very sensitive. So we have to be. We have to, we have to take more of, of 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 like a holy approach to how we approach in this situation. You know what I'm saying. So we don't want to give them any any fire. In any fuel to the fire, you know what I'm saying? Because they look for any little, such any little, you know, deviant, you know, space to try to condemn someone, especially people of color. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't agree with I don't agree with what they what they're saying. Um, so, we, but we just have to be mindful of how we carry ourselves, so we won't give them any ammunition. Yeah, I definitely think that was um, a wise response. And I do agree with you. So, you know, I do want to state for the record that, you know, we believe our community is love centered, right? We promote, you know, peace and prosperity of those that we deem to be a part of our nation by encouraging them to practice the culture given to our ancestors by the Most High, as well as bringing awareness to our people. The fact that, you know, others outside of our nation have demonstrated a perpetual cruelty Uh, towards us, you know, we can look throughout the Bible and see that multiple captivities. So that's what we actually do to promote, you know, the uplifting of our people. So uh, with that being said, what do you think about, you know, how we go about um, uplifting our people and the message behind it? I mean, I think, I I think, I think the first and foremost, it's it's always, always understanding what the laws are, right? So when we break, when we break down the, the biblical laws, then that that gives us a foundation of how we should govern ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Because every because if we don't, then we are here lawless, and then you have a lot of chaos. So we have to take we have to take time out to really 
understand what these laws are and really try to perfect these laws because we're that's our that's that's going to keep us solid right we're in the training grounds right now our goal is to inherit the kingdom in order for us to inherit the kingdom we have to be able to withstand this physical this physical flesh and in order to do that we have to have these laws we have to we have to somewhat govern ourselves with these laws and i think once we once we embody that then that whole perspective going to change because it, it says in the torah it says it says in the first five books it says you know if, if we keep these laws and statutes these things, these positive things will happen to us, right? So that's what we got to do. We got to get to that fundamental principle of keeping these laws and these statutes so that way we can now flip the script on what the world's thinking about us. Agree 100% with the brother. Uh, uh, drop, drop the ball for this brother because this is what we teach consistently. We have to keep the laws of God to have true success. Um, and everything will be uh, flipped, um, you know, or the other nations right here. Uh, my next question would be is, uh, so with the disconnect uh, between the um, masses and what they believe about us and who we truly are, um, do you think we should have fair opportunities to represent ourselves in the same spaces we see ourselves being misrepresented? Yeah, we can represent ourselves. I mean, that's how everyone else does it, right? We can't we can't depend on nobody else to give us a handout. We got to do it ourselves, right? <clears throat> I mean, so we have to we have to be able to 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 we. There's a lot of us out here who understand we are as a people, but we're separated by different camps, and different different beliefs, maybe, but we all are one, right? So we have to we have to find a way to to come together and be able to become a nation, so that way we can now take our you know, collectiveness and say, hey, we, we, we demand this from, from you guys. We, we, you know, we need you guys to build our school institutions. We need you guys to build our hospitals. We need y'all to give us this. Like, in order for that to happen, we're going to have to come together as a, as, as a whole. You know what I'm saying? And I think right now we're still somewhat separated between different camps and groups to where we're not able to unite to really create a real change. Oh, that's an excellent answer. I 100% agree. And uh, that's what we always talk about here on this specific platform. So, you know, I'm definitely glad that you share that understanding. So would you yourself be willing to, you know, help facilitate in some of these open dialogues that, you know, need to be had between ourselves and the other nations? And specifically, uh, would you be willing to have further uh, discourses here with the God First Gang? Yeah, for sure, man. I, I, I appreciate what y'all are doing. I think what y'all are doing is brilliant because it allow, it gives us a platform to really discuss, you know, open open conversation and dialogue to unite each other. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm all, I'm always willing to to help out any way I can. And that's 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 my whole mission. That's what I'm on this grind for is to be able to be you know what I'm saying to represent us in a way that we can, you know what I'm saying a way that we can somewhat be respected, you know, and and and, and be able to make some change. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing, man. Oh, you had something like that? All phrases. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing, man. I, uh, I just want to backtrack real quick. Uh, you know, I know earlier you definitely uh said uh, you know, especially like the Spaniards and stuff, the Gentiles. I wholeheartedly agree with you. So, being that uh, you know, I, I want to get your take on the. By and large, the Jews that are in Israel today, would you say that they are actually blood descendants from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or would you say that they are converts and not blood descendants? What would you say? Well, you got you got a lot of you got a lot of European you got a lot of a lot of European Jewish people in in Israel, so therefore they're not that they're, they're from Japhat, so they're technically are not from the descendant of um, they're not they're not from the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? But you do have Edom. If 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 we're considering the Orthodox community to be from Edom, then they are from Abraham, and they are a Hebraic people. And it may not be from Jacob, but they were always around Israel and Israelites throughout since they since they've been in Mount Seir, and Mount Seir is right next to the Judean region, so they always somewhat been there. But there are a lot of European Jews that are in Israel, and they are not direct descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
Amazing. So with that, you would say most of them are Japheth, and you will also say some of them are Esau by your answer. Just just for some clarity, that's all, brother. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you know Esau has always been around, right? Esau always been there, um, and the 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 European jewelry was somewhat converted into what we now call Judaism. Can you tell me about when that happened, uh, according to your studies? Um, when the European jewelry was converted to Judaism, I mean, you got to think about during the times during the times of King Harold. King Harold's grandfather was converted to Judaism by the by the Maccabees. You know what I'm saying? So they converted. King Harold was the first Gentile ruler over the nation of Israel, and this is this, and so this is this is this was back in what before 70 A.D. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, so so the European jewelry has been around in Israel for a long time. Even the Romans, even the Romans back then, a lot of the Romans converted. So a lot of so a lot of European Jewry have have been somewhat considered to be Jewish for a long time now. So uh so that you would definitely say the European Jewry has the most control in Israel, correct? For sure, right? Yeah, for sure. We don't have any control. Israelites were taken to captivity, we were taken out to the four corners of the earth, we lost a lot of remembrance. Half of us don't know who we are still today, so we have no control over Israel. And right now, most of the European, the more European jury has control over Israel. So do you think it's our duty uh, to take back our heritage and to take back our culture and take back our position as actually being the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, since by your standards, the people who have control are not the actual descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. If take back would be the word, but I think I do think we have to. We have to somewhat learn and be able to understand how to how, how to really maneuver our way into learning how to be, you know, to to get back to Israel. And first of all, you don't, we don't have to get back to Israel to to inherit the kingdom, right? I mean, you know, so we can be here in America and still be a righteous nation, but if you did want to go back to Israel. It's a matter. It's a matter of you know. It's a matter of learning, and being able to engulf yourself in that space to then now understand how to maneuver in Israel. All praises, all praises. Uh, I pretty much got one more left. Uh, you know that off the top of my mind. Um, I think, you know, teaching the so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans of Negro and Indian descent, by and large. Uh, the truth of the Bible and to keep the law, statutes, and commandments will actually turn our ghettos and the hell that we grow up in into heaven on earth. I just want to get your take on that. How important do you think it is to actually teach our people our heritage, which is the law, statutes, and commandments of God? It's, it's important. I mean, that's the most important thing we can deal with, right? It's, it's, also, it's, about not, it's also about not speaking ill will toward one. It's not name calling and gossiping. It's also guarding your eyes, not lusting after women, not committing adultery. All these things are also very, very important. And that takes a lot of work. You know what I'm saying? We grew up, I grew up, I grew up in the hood. I grew up in, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't always easy to somewhat transform myself into being able to, and I made a lot of mistakes, but it's not easy to transform yourself into following God's laws completely, right? It takes time. It takes community. It takes conversation it takes like-minded brothers and sisters it takes all of us collectively to try to learn how to govern ourselves properly right we can't we can't you know these gospel sites and all these things right here all they're doing is all the gossip does it's like it's like killing someone without killing them you know what i'm saying like if you do something wrong i'm gonna go and tell five other people oh yeah man you know so and so over there acting crazy doing this then the third but i'm not going to you and saying hey hey brother we need to tighten up we got to do a better job at this you know what I'm saying? So that, so therefore, those those actions got to take place in our community, opposed to not keeping those laws. The laws are very, very detailed, and we have to understand what they are, so we can somewhat learn how to transform ourselves. Yeah, I, I actually 100% agree with that. And I know y'all was always telling uh, us that you believe you got to take a trip back. Uh, to Israel, so we definitely didn't want to hold you up long. We wanted to get straight to it with a lot of these questions to get an understanding, and I'm glad you did. Um, so uh, definitely thank you for your time and you answering our questions, uh, but 
do you have any for us? Do you have any questions for us? Or would you like to discuss anything with us uh, particular at this time? Man, whatever you got, man, run it. I'm here. I'm here now. So might as well run them up. Bill, um, y'all, what's up? Did you uh, have anything? Yeah, I want to, uh, since, since, he, since, he, since he's all, all ears, since, since he's willing, what's your take on Christ, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ? Well, I mean, you got you got you got to think. I mean, you know, obviously, it depends on like a lot of Christians nowadays don't keep the laws, and and if you read the New Testament, Christ always kept the laws. He set the laws in order for, in order for you to inherit the kingdom. You have to keep those commandments. You have to keep. You know, he went he went to, he went to the he went he went to pray on the Sabbath day and all these things. So for most Christians, for the Christian world, they follow the Roman Catholic Church. You know what I'm saying? They're not following. They're not following the teachings of of Yahshua because they are somewhat consider themselves to be Christians. But if you're a follower of Yahshua, then you should know how to keep these laws properly that Moses put in place in the Torah. Hey, drop a bomb for this brother. Yeah, we got to drop bombs for that, man. Hey. We dropping bombs, bombs. Drop, Hold drop on. Bombs. Hey, yo. All hey. praises. And I want to, I want to, I want to just, read, I just want to read one thing to support this brother's position. Uh, because what this brother said, um, you know, Christ said, uh, prior to him, I just want to read one verse if I can. This is St. John chapter 5 and verse 46. It says, For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. So you see, going to Deuteronomy 18, and you see that understanding of that prophet to come. This is verse 47. It says, But if you believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? And that substantiates what the brother just said. I mean, in Christianity, we teach the same thing. Uh, you know, they're following uh, like this Europeanized, um, blonde hair. Um, and you don't see that in the text. You know, Revelation 1 speaks of a, a very dark man with woolly hair um, being uh, Christ. And right here, Christ said the same thing that Amari said prior to Amari. Uh, you got to believe Moses. You got to follow these laws. Um, and if you're not, um, then you're following the wrong Christ. I agree with uh, Amari on that. Or Yehoshaphat. Um, I wanted to uh, ask, since we kind of down this line of logic, do you feel like you uh, grasp or have a solid understanding on particularly like prophecy within the Tanakh? Do you feel like you have a grasp on prophecy, understanding thereof? Yeah, for sure. Pro private, private, privacy, privacy is the key of like understanding what's what's going to happen in the future. You know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, privacy is important. I think I got a pretty good grasp of prophecy. Okay. So, do you see um, what within prophecy? Do you see like the nation of Israel having like a physical kingdom on the earth and being uh, in rulership? Do you see that in prophecy? Yeah, when the Messiah when the Messiah comes. After he comes to clean this nation up, when the world gets cleaned up and sanitized, then we'll then we'll be able to govern ourselves as a, as a complete nation. But right now, it ain't gonna happen. Right, now, it ain't gonna happen until the Messiah comes. I definitely agree with you, man. A hundred percent on point. I just um, you know thought to ask you that. Yeah, I'm glad that you um, acknowledged that because that's the same thing that we teach here, week in and week out. That in the meantime, until our Savior returns. This is what we need to do. We need to gather together in righteousness. And that means to keep the law, statutes and commandments until, you know, our Messiah returns and establishes us back as the number one nation on the planet. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll yield with that. I know other brothers have questions for you. Uh, do you uh, hold uh, that, you know, Jesus Christ uh, or, you know, some people say Yeshua, we will say uh, Mashiach, how was shy? Do you believe that he is the Messiah written up in the Bible? I mean, if that's what he said, he was. So you believe that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, obviously, we know, we know that. Wow, let me drop a bomb for him myself. Oh, I think, I'm gonna, I'm gonna oh, tell you what it is. I, I'm gonna tell you what. It, I'm going to tell you what it is, and I'm going to be honest, because oftentimes is that you don't get an opportunity to communicate directly with each other. So there are so many, uh, you know, false fences put up 
um, where people think, oh, this is what they stand for and this is what they believe. <clears throat> so you get an opportunity to actually sit down, you know, over some uh, uh, digital coffee and, and enjoy a conversation and just communicate. You know, and I think that's um, what's, what's very uh, prevalent and needed in our community uh, as Israelites. So I, I really appreciate the brother, uh, your host, Shafai, for stop, stopping by uh, the Guy First Gang and uh, giving us that information. Um, so if you don't have any questions for us, um, you know, we don't, uh, y'all what's up? Did you want to get into questions from the audience? Um, I think, I think yeah, it's pretty if, uh, Yeah. If the brother, <coughs> your host, your fat, uh, you know, if you don't have any questions for us, brother, uh, I, we could definitely open up the stage now. Uh, what I, what I will say to the audience is before we're even going to let you up now, you can, uh, back chat either me, Corey, or Halab. And if the questions are appropriate, you know, because we don't want to disrespect this brother, this brother's been very respectful on this stage. So if the questions are appropriate, we will let you on this stage. <coughs> well, it's if not you, even really about disrespect. It's more so about edification. If your question there is you stupid, go. you know, so just send a question in the back chat. Um, that way we can analyze it and then have your, uh, you know, ask the question. Uh, make sure y'all click that little greenhouse at the top, become a member of God First Gang and nominate others to the platform. We got the good brother, Yehoshaphat, a.k.a. Amari Stoudemire on the platform. Uh, and uh, having an excellent interview with him. It's been going awesome. Uh, so, bring it on up. I'll, I'll, I think Man of God actually have a a, a good a good question I might want to ask Amari uh um, for for man of God, I want to allow man of God on the stage because you know even Amari was saying you know this place got to be cleaned up. So what do y'all think? Should I should I can I ask man of God's question? I I, I think you should let man of God up if he if he's willing to come up. No, I, 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 I think I should. I think I should ask. Yeah, me too. I, I, we all vote for y'all. Yeah, I don't want to see hey, man, on stage, man. I tried to give the brother grace, but it's all good. <laughs> yeah, man of God is a, a, a excellent um, a, a pastor of Christianity uh, that frequents our rooms, and we have good bills, and some bills aren't so good. Uh, we get down and dirty, and we go into the scriptures. Long story short, uh, he's still a brother. He's still of you know, our nation and nationality. Um, so his question to you is, um, what made you leave Christianity? Uh, I don't know if you actually uh, substantiated that you were in Christianity in the interview. I believe I seen some information online uh, where in, I believe your first high school you went to was a Christian academy. Uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that information. But um yeah, his question is, what made you leave Christianity if you were a part of it? Yeah, I mean, I was raised, I was raised in the Baptist church, you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the South, you feel me? So um, my thing was, I had to, when I, when I was studying, when I was studying the New Testament, I had to, I, I started realizing that a lot of things that, that we were doing, keeping Christmas and Easter and Valentine's Day and all these things are nowhere in the script. So I'm like, so I started to realize that, wait, hold on a second. There's something ain't right here. So I started dissecting this thing and looking at it and from, a, from a deeper intellect and realizing we've been finessed by, by the Romans, by the Roman Catholic Church. You know what I'm saying? And so once I realized that, that's when I disconnected myself from Christianity and just tapped into what's actually been, what's actually, what, what, what the books say, opposed to dealing with what paganism says. Excellent answer. That that was that was beautiful. All right, the brothers. Uh, Y'all got any questions? For, uh, back chat. Um, Yehoshaphat, we have a sister <clears throat> by the name of Sister Airy. She said you guys are good friends, and uh, she said she's definitely been wanting you to come on this side of Clubhouse and uh, speak with us. So she says hi. Um, Mahala, Y'all what's up? Y'all got any in the back chat? Yeah, I literally just opened up the uh, opened up people so they could raise their hands. So anybody that sent me questions, y'all gotta raise your hands, man. If you didn't send me a question, you're you're not coming on stage. You know what I'm saying? Right. So right, and I'm I'm vetting some of them as well. So 
make sure we vet. <clears throat> and uh, nobody, any anybody that we letting up on stage, don't unmic uh, too fast. Just give it a second. We gonna. I'm just. I got a lot of questions in my back chat, so I'm literally reading through them one by one. So y'all just yeah, with with me. Me. Uh, yeah your host yeah, fat. Um, Let's go for many, it. Up, about how many questions you could take, my good brother? How long you available? I put time aside for this, man. So we good. All praises to the Most High in Christ. All praises. All praises. Yeah, send your questions in the back chat. If I said la, it's la. Um, y'all, what's up? Did you uh anybody receive that Shawpaw's question? I think Shawpaw had a question. Yeah, forgive me. Uh, yeah, while I'm uh shower party, you could do your thing. While I'm uh looking at these other questions. Uh, yeah, I see. Uh, I see some questions. I see some questions on here in the chat. I can jump on. Don't yeah, worry. you know, uh, Shalom King. What's going on? Peace, King. Peace and blessings, yo. I got two questions for you. you know what I'm saying nothing uh, too serious, but again, it's kind of serious, right? That's uh, funny. right now in the community that I grew up in, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Right, you know what I'm saying? And one of the biggest problems uh, that I've seen that caused a lot of chaos, you know, not, you know, not only not them following Torah, because, you know, them not following Torah caused a lot of chaos in the communities. We know that. That's understood right now in this conversation. But also uh, single mother households, right? Yeah. There's a lot of single mother households. Uh, a lot of our men um, were destroyed during the crack epidemic, and then they fell into gang banging. There's not a lot of good brothers out here for the sisters so yeah. um according to torah and according to your understanding how do you feel about uh, multiple wives i mean most <clears throat> multiple wives is obviously it was dealt with back in those days and it was always governed by the actual wife you know what i'm saying it wasn't that the man was out there just choosing women and say hey i want this to be my wife i want that to be my wife the reason why they had multiple wives because their wife was childbearing so they couldn't have any children. So the wife would say, well, hey, take the maid servant and marry her and bring, since she's already with us, you marry her as our, as your wife and then we can have children. You know what I'm saying? So that, so that was because, and it happens today still where someone will marry a woman and she can't have any children, then therefore he is, his obligation, the first law that God gave man was to be fruitful and multiply. Right. That's the first mitzvah that God gave man. So therefore, if we're not able to accomplish that mitzvah or that law, then therefore we are obligated to make that happen. And our wife would take on that responsibility and say, hey, well, I will allow you to have another wife so we can have so you can have children. You know what I'm saying? But It's not like we're going out and saying, man, I want to have another girl. I got to have a man. She's fine. I want to talk to her. Oh, she look good over here. I want to holler at her. That ain't how it goes. It has to be done in, in a holy way to where the wife knows she can't have any children and therefore she will then allow you to take another wife. Um, I got a, a pretty different understanding than you. I, I like That understanding you gave is uh, is part of a compound understanding that I have because, you know, David took on um, Abigail after her wicked ass husband died and then he took on another wife in that same chapter. You know, you said, um, David, I feel like, you, said King, you said David, King David. Yeah. After King David, um, King David, yeah. King David uh, had a wife. His wife that he married was someone that he saw naked across the way, and he actually did an, He did. A, he did a, a horrible sin by having his her husband killed in war, and then he took. I'm on, not talking about that account. I'm talking about you know the righteous account of him um, marrying Abigail. Nabal was a wicked brother. I believe that's First Samuel chapter twenty-five. Nabal mm -hmm. was a the wicked brother, and the Most High killed his wicked ass, and you know um, Abigail became his wife, and that wasn't the only wife he got in that chapter. He got another wife in that same chapter. My 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 reason for saying this is that you know a brother like you of a certain prestige, you know what I'm saying, and um, of a certain countenance and a law keeper, you know what I'm saying. I would say that a brother like you you know, should have multiple wives because a lot of our sisters got slim pickings out here. and But, you know, that's something I just think you should dwell upon as a man. And uh, we can move on to the next question. Yeah, I hear that. I hear that. I understand what you're saying. Um, 
I just want to ask one more question that we could uh, right, got it. Got it. take up everybody's time. I got one more question for you, Ak. So, um, with this, uh, with this information about you know our heritage and culture spreading worldwide, is there any avenues you open up where we can have, um, you know, uh, co uh, conferences or discussions with our brothers that's like in Israel, America, Africa, South America? Is there anything that you're working on right now in, in regards to that? I mean, there's a lot. There's a lot we can do. Like conferences is very important, right? That's something that I think is it should happen because um, it brings us together in like one collectiveness, and we can have open dialogue and have discussion and, and kind of harmonize amongst each other. I think that's very, very important. Even in America, that's important for us to have for that to happen. Um, abroad, it can happen. Just a lot, a lot of more dynamics got to go into it with travel and all these things. But, but it can definitely happen. Right now. I have nothing in the works on that. I did speak to some brothers back a few years back, wanted to do a conference and kind of bring everybody in and have a conversation so we can all be on one accord. Uh, but it didn't go anywhere, you know what I'm saying? But hopefully in the future, we can make that happen. Good deal, appreciate that, Shao Par. Andrew, and love. Hey, uh, Andrew, did you see your question in the back chat? Go on, I sent it to y'all, what's up? All right. Uh, all right. Good deal. So uh, make sure y'all click that little greenhouse, become a member of the God First Game platform. This is the only platform. This could go down. It's a beautiful platform on Clubhouse. Make sure you become a member and nominate others to it. Of course, simply put the uh, topic is God First Game interviews. Amari Stoudemire, uh, brother Yawasap of Rome, Badog Barium, and God First Game put this together with the good brother Yehoshaphat, a.k.a. Amari Stoudemire. Uh, for the purposes of this interview. It's been a lovely one. Uh, we'll move over to Andrew's question. Andrew, you have a question uh, for Yehoshaphat. Go on, shalom, Israel. Shalom, shalom, brother Yehoshaphat. Pleasure to meet you, man. It's definitely a pleasure to meet you. Um, so so my, my question is, my question is, um, not that I'm trying to, like, make things difficult, but... It was just almost to land me back off the question of um, with Christ. So, how much do you adhere to like the New Testament in terms of? Because I know obviously different people are they be non messianic or messianic. So, how much do you adhere to the New Testament? I mean, there's definitely there's definitely a lot of messianic Jews that even live in Israel um, that that understand the context of the New Testament on what that really upholds, and that New Testament is basically. It's the same. It's the same. It's, it's just a continuation of the old of the Hebrew Bible. It's the same. It's a continuation, right? All it talks about is laws, how to govern oneself, and how to really be able to understand prophecy. And if you do this thing right, you can re you, re you can resurrect yourself, right? So it's it's one big continuation of a book. I don't agree with the term New Testament, but it's the same continuation of the wording about what it takes to 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 inherit the kingdom. Um, and that's how I look at it. Okay, yeah, I, I I can yield at that point because I'm the same as you. I I don't, you know, we say New Testament just because you know that's what they you know so called call it, but you know it comes in the volume of the book. So yeah, I definitely appreciate. It. That's all my question. Yeah, appreciate. That's that the answer. Uh, we agree here as well. Uh, we don't fully agree on that term, New Testament. We know New Testament is a biblical concept of a contract um, that was clearly stated in Jeremiah 31 and 31. Um, and it has different details, and then they later just named those 27 books the New Testament for whatever reason. So, uh, uh, excellent question, Andrew. We'll move on to Zaytun. I want to bring up uh, one, we'll probably take one more question and then we'll yield the room. Let me get uh, this brother right here. Uh, Parak, if you can, uh, raise your hand, Parak. Raise your hand, Parak. And uh, my Allah, but y'all, what's up? If y'all see Parak, raise his hand. Bring him up. You know, be good, brother Parak. All right, so let's uh, let's move over to Zaytun. Zaytun, you got a question for Yehoshaphat. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, shalom to the panel. Uh, my apologies if I pronounced your name wrong. Um, you mentioned you moved to Israel. Can you ask? Can I ask you a question? How was the atmosphere like? When you first went there, was the uh, was the Israelis were they nice to you? 
kind to you or not, because usually when I ask black Jews this question that live in uh, Israel, I'm sorry about the wrong way to pronounce it. Um, they usually said they were a lot kind. I heard you said they were rich towards you. Does that still go on for you being there long, for being there or no? No, nah, I mean, honestly, bro, when I, when I first got to Israel and I was walking through the old city of Jerusalem, a lot, a lot of Jewish people were saying the redemption is here. The redemption is here. People were saying like the Messiah is coming, the Messiah is coming because they start seeing the image of God walking through their, walking through this Jerusalem. They don't see this. They don't see it often. And when, and when they start noticing that the lost tribes are coming back to Israel and they are focused on God, the whole dynamic changes. If we go in there trying to, you know, trying to just hang out and kick it, that's different. But if you go in there trying to really connect with God and you're trying to search for righteousness and you focus on that, they that energy, that energy spreads out through all of Israel. Now you do have some people like in every in every culture, you have a few people that are like, you know, curious and not totally sure what's going on. Some people may not like it, but they can't stop what's happening. You know what I'm saying? So there's a lot of there's a lot of brethren in Israel in Jerusalem. Like when I was there learning, I was there with five other brethren who was who from Minnesota, from from LA, from 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 Haiti, from from France, from all over all over the world that are in Israel learning, bro. Like you know what I'm saying. So it's not it's not a far fetched deal because we out there. It's just that it seems like it is because not that it's not a lot of us out there. Thank you. I appreciate that answer. That's um, that's some really, really good insight. You know, I didn't think about it that way. You know, the brother actually is looked at, you know, as a god, or as he should be. So, you know, that was an interesting, uh, you know, revelation there. So we are going to move forward in the queue. Definitely appreciate the question. We can move to the brother Parak. Shalom, brother. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So my question to the brother is: Would you being a person of re would you would you being a person of renown and being around people of the same status is this a conversation that's had amongst you and your peers about us being the true Israelites according to the Bible, or is it just something that's not really sp spoke of? Oh, it's definitely it's definitely spoke of definitely spoke of and there, there there's a massive awareness of that but what, what what a lot of people are saying is that okay if they are this this is me speaking as if i'm not right god forbid but it's just saying just speaking from that perspective they're saying well if they are then why aren't they focusing in on keeping the laws why aren't why aren't they behaving as why aren't they behaving like a jew why aren't they keeping shabbat properly why, why are they still you know, you know, why, why are the women not dressing modestly? Why are they asking all these things? You know what I'm saying? And in a way of saying, well, they, they very well could be from the children of Israel, but they have to somewhat adapt to the culture of being a Zadik, a righteous man. They have to now transform themselves to become a Jew. You know what I'm saying? That's how they think. And for us, we're like, well, I know who we are. We are from the descendants of Israel. You know what I'm saying? But they're like, well, act like it. That's how they feel. That's powerful. Definitely uh, appreciate that insight as well. You know, they're kind of looking at us like we got to get it together you know, from, from that understanding. So we'll go ahead and move to the Elder Pana. Appreciate the Elder Pana for coming up. Hey, Shalom, Shalom. Actually, uh, Parak took my question. <laughs> um, so I'll have a follow up question kind of um, that ties into that. Um, I remember when uh, yeah, I saw you, you know, kind of convert and being a follower of this movement, um, you know, back around like 2000, I probably like 13 ish. I remember you went to a Passover with Gathering of Christ Church. I saw it on the Internet. So I was like, you know, the most high is working, um, seeing that the most high, he has, you know, uh, respect unto Israel. He don't care if you, um, has the greatest talent of the world. So the least of the talent, the most high chooses his children. He has his elect. So that definitely brought a lot of awareness to the nation. Um, and so I know when it comes to 
contracts when it comes to um, those who are, you know, uh, exposing their gifts to the world. There's a sense of exploitation. There's a sense of, you know, being tied to something. Um, was that um, one of the reasons why you felt like maybe the uh, NBA wasn't a good fit for your, you know, your new spiritual walk um, with you, you know, going to Israel? Man, I was I, I used I used the NBA when I was in the league. I, I had a I had a YouTube channel, and I I told I told the world back then. I went on my YouTube channel, and I was like, "We have a African American. We have an identity crisis. You know what I'm saying? We are from the children of Israel. We're not black. We're not Negroes. We're not African American. That was given to us by Jesse Jackson in 1989. Like I had this whole conversation back in 2018, 17, 16, maybe. You know what I'm saying? So I've 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 used I was in the NBA saying the same exact thing. Um, so I really haven't deviated from that. It's just that my learnings just propelled me to to go further, right? It just took me it just took me on a, on a further journey into going into Israel and to learning and seeing what's happening and and getting engulfed in the community and see what's going on. What am I missing? What am I not learning? How do I govern myself properly? That journey took me that way, but I've been on this way for a long time. Con, con, thank you for that. My brother. Everybody should be dropping some fires right now for the good brother Amari Stoudemire, now known as Yehoshaphat, coming and disseminating some wisdom I definitely brought wisdom to these questions. You know, we got some positions clarified on what he understands. And, um, you know, it was all beautiful information. You know, now I'm going to hold you to it. You said you was willing to do some more builds so in the future. So, you know, we're definitely going to be looking forward to having you back and getting into some other topics. All right. But everybody, make sure y'all give him a follow. Yes, sir. I want, to I want to tap in on two topics I saw in the chat. One, one question was about the Talmud. They want to know about the Talmud. There's two Talmuds. There's one of Yerushomi, which is from Jerusalem, that was written by Israelites. And there's one from, from, from Bavi, which is written in Babylon, that was written by Israelites and some, and maybe some, some that were not Israelites. The, the, what, what's, what's, what's in those books are detailed conversation of the sages during the times of like before 70 AD that were discussing how to properly keep certain laws. You know what I'm saying? So that's so so each each tractate, each book breaks down a different law. So right now I'm studying the laws of a Nazar, like a Nazareth. What are the laws of a Nazareth? If he if he decides to take a vow to grow his locks, how long is that vow? Can he have a one day vow? You don't grow locks for one day. Can it does it have to be a five year vow? If he does, if he does decide to end his if he did end his vow, how can he cut his hair? Can he use a razor? Well, the Torah said you cannot cut, put a razor to the corners of your head and your beard. So how can he cut his hair? Does he cut his hair bald when he finishes his vow? Like all those laws in each of those books, each of those, each of the Talmud breaks down those small, intricate conversations that these righteous men, these sages were writing down and trying to understand in conversation. That's what the Talmud is all about. That's all that's in those books. We definitely appreciate that. And you know, we're going to have to talk about that. You know, we definitely, um, that's another uh, topic build in and of itself. And then we definitely yeah. get into yeah, that. Yeah, I definitely think time. in another, yeah, in, in, in the future yeah. conversation, I yeah. think that should be the highlight on what we talk about. The Talmud. And that's, you that know, should be the next. <laughs> I think no that'll be. I think that'd be a really good room. No doubt. And one more. One more topic. They talked. I saw in the chat about ahead, me bro. learning with Edomites. Me learning with Edom and being they from the synagogue of Satan. The, the, the script. The script said they from the synagogue of Satan because they lie. Well, if they lying about who they are, that's between them and God. That ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? Like that. God gonna take care. If 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 God got a problem with them, then God gonna take care of what he got to take care of. You know what I'm saying? It don't stop. It don't stop me from learning what we taught them. You know what I'm saying? Like we 
we the ones converted the Gentiles into following what we now call Judaism. And we lost a lot of our remembrance because we got taken off to captivity. So all, all we got to do now, all I'm doing now, is just learning what we taught and what we lost. What they got going on with God, that's between them and God. It ain't got nothing to do with me. You know what I'm saying? So that's, I want to kind of clarify that too. I saw that in, I saw that question in, in the chat. Just want to tap on that. Wisdom. Hey, Amart, hey, the brother Yehoshaphat here. Come, cut come. You, know. you know, he will cut Wisdom. you now. He ain't, he ain't no slouch out there. Yeah, man. man. He ain't, ain't, no ain't, comp uh, ain't no compromise. Taking all so comments, you know. Yeah, man, we got a, a after party. My boy's funny, bro. We got an after party, bro. Yeah, we appreciate you, um, Yehoshaphat, for real, um, for yes, coming sir. to the God for the platform, doing this interview, man. Um, you know, we got an after party room that we'll, uh, we'll open up right after this. And then usually the after party rooms are a little bit more uh, rugged. Uh, you know, we allow more people to come to the stage and converse uh, different ideology views and character traits. Um, so... Uh, that'll be going down on the guy first gang and you'll be able to uh, see how that goes if you um, choose to stick around. Make sure y'all following the good brother Yehoshaphat. It's been an excellent interview since five. Uh, Cap, I seen you raise your hand. I didn't know if you wanted to uh, come up and had a question. Uh, you can come up. Let me see. Uh, make sure y'all follow uh, a quick demo. What you got? What you got, Amari? I was going to say y'all can follow me on IG, man. Amari Israel. And what the brother was saying, man, about, you know, obviously being a single man, it's always good to find, it's hard to find sisters out here that understand this biblical connotation. So, you know, you know, we, you know, we, <laughs> we got an open lane, you feel me? So let's, <laughs> let's see what we can come up with. You see that? Ah, multiple wives for the man. <laughs> no, nah, I ain't say all that. I'm not saying that. I just need one. I don't need, you see I don't need, that? I don't need multiple. I don't need multiple. I just need one. <laughs> Come on now, brother. You got, <laughs> 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 you got the Audemars Shaw for throwing the alley hoop, man. You right. see that? Hey, hey, hey trying to four. get the brother your host fat. Caught up? <laughs> nah, I'm good. I ain't no caught up. I'm straight. I'm a single man. man. There you go. So I just need one wife. Hey, hey, I, I could tell through the spirit, man. Come on now. Y'all got to give me some credit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. We arrange them things around here. Make sure y'all click that little greenhouse, become a member of the God First Game platform. Follow your host, Shafai, a.k.a. Amari Stoudemire, on the Clubhouse platform, as well as his Instagram Hit that uh, link. If you click his profile and go into the link, you'll see the Instagram link. It's very simple to do. Um, and follow that brother. Make sure you're following uh, Maul Halab and Yawasak uh, for playing a heavy role at putting together this interview um, for the God First Game platform. And some of the people who came up and asked those excellent questions, uh, I don't want to shower for our Andrew, Zaytun, Parak, Panah. And I'm not sure if we're missing anybody else who uh, presented questions. I believe Man of God had a question as well. Uh, so make sure you guys uh, tune in for the next time. Next time, we're going to be building with Yehoshaphat, um, a.k.a. Amari Stoudemire, about the Talmud. We got to talk about this because this also uh, is a very important topic when it comes to the uh, community. We started off by, you know, addressing his life, career, faith. Um, I think all of us were well rooted in the Torah. So we walk with the passion that he was displaying for the Torah, which is why we create rooms one, two, three, maybe even four times a day or week trying to communicate to our people about the laws of God, the first five books. So we definitely walk with him on that. We got his understanding on the so-called New Testament. We all agreed that, you know, the New Testament is not necessarily uh, called the New Testament. Um, and, uh, you know, Christ being an individual in the New Testament, as well as the other characters, was uh, is just a simple continuation of the same idea of the Old Testament. We all agreed on that, um, which was some of the things that uh, we felt that was placed on his table, um, that he didn't necessarily agree with that idea. Um, but that's uh, pretty much when it comes to the Talmud or what they would consider the old traditions. Um, that would be an excellent conversation that we can kind of have to figure some things out and part some things out on discrepancies with it that we have, um, things that he agree with and disagree with. And then we can communicate about that. And all of these conversations are in love. So I appreciate the brother coming to the platform. Um, you know, he stood up and uh, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. Oh, the floor is yours, Amari. No, we're good, beloved, man. Thanks for having me, bro. I think this is very important, man, to have this type of, type of dialogue because it, all it does is iron sharpens iron, man. We just get sharper and sharper. We become a holy nation. And we and when God looked down, he'd be proud of what transpires. Definitely, man. Uh 
you know, uh, your host, your fat. I'm going to hit you up, brother. We're going to talk about the next room. Uh, we, we have set that up in the near future. I know you, 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 you go back and forth. So, you know, to the best, to the best of your convenience, man, we'll set that up and we'll talk about a variety of other things, brother, man. It was a, it was a pleasure having you on the platform. I'm not going to lie. You surprised me, hey, my good brother. Hey, you hey, 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 <laughs> so like if I may, you know, just to, you know, bring some uh, la- laughter in the room. Um, who's the goat? <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> yeah, we got to finish it off. Yeah, we know, we, we know, we know who the goat is. We, we know, know who the goat. The goat is. Uh, thank you. All right, yeah, yeah, it's not, it's path. not, it's not even, it's not even the comparison who the goat right. is. Mike Jordan. Of course. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Hey, question. Who's your favorite player to guard? LeBron or uh, Kobe? Hold on, hold on, Zay. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. The, hard, the hardest, the hardest player to guard between LeBron and Kobe was was Kobe. It was harder yeah. to guard. It was hard to guard Kobe. LeBron, you can figure out. You can back off him and make him shoot. You can try to close the lane up. Mm. Kobe, Kobe didn't mm. have any weaknesses, bro. Kobe going to the post. He going to the wing. He had a mm. jumper. Kobe had left hand, right hand, whatever you wanted. Kobe had all the footwork. It was a whole different animal, man. Ah, uh, see that? No, hey, no, no, no. Hold on, hold on. We might have found, uh, we might have found our third interview. Right. This, this might have. We, we, we may have to move the tile move back to the third and then pick up the second. Because right. the brother just went against King James. Now I gotta bring out all my points, man. I, I gotta like find LeBron, my no, old I, notebook. I, I I right. LeBron, I don't know. I think I got LeBron maybe over Kobe, but I'm just saying the person that was harder to guard. Cold. Hey, Yahosha Fat, you got to talk to Corey about good. idol worship, man. He worshiped that dude, LeBron. Man. Talk to this guy. <laughs> no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. But you, no, know, I don't. you know I got to but... roll with the king, being a kid from Akron myself. You know, no I, I got to roll with him. And I got to say that, you know, since you left the league, LeBron's game has evolved. You know the footwork, the jumpers. So you just, you just can't guard this LeBron James yet. That's all. You can't guard him. You can't guard him. You can't guard him, bro. You can't guard him. See that? So hey, man. You know, it's not too bad. But we go. We gonna have to talk about the MJ thing, man. You know. But uh, other than that, man. You know, it, it's been a, it's been a good interview until he said that statement. Uh, so you know, we we might have to decline in this. I don't know, man. MJ, you know, make sure y'all follow. <laughs> Make sure y'all following the guy first game platform. Make sure y'all following your host, fat. Hey, y'all was up in mall. I finna jet into the after party room. Open that up. Open that link up. Amar, um, you definitely uh, are welcome to come over if you had time. Um, it's just gonna be another uh, room on the guy first gang, and then we're gonna kind of bring everybody to the stage and allow people to converse and stuff like that. Um, I finna shoot over and open it up. Y'all was up in mall. Y'all be able to close this space. Over yes, there. sir. I got it. Yes, sir. All right. Good deal. All right, beloved, I appreciate it, man. Y'all the best, everyone, man. I appreciate you, man. Hey, yo, host your fat. I'm going to keep peace and love. I'll yo. Pro- I'll probably hit you up tomorrow, bro. All right, bet. Just hit me. All right, shalom, brother. All right, family. Shalom. Peace.